Hi everybody, this is Molly in St. Mary's, Georgia, and I'm here in front of the Macintosh Sugar Mill in St. Mary's. And I want to tell you about a building material that you can only find in the southeast, and that is called tabby. So tabby was first used by the Spanish back in the 15-1600s here in the New World. And I'm going to start walking up to this building so y'all can see what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> Uh, so, what is tabby? It's an early form of concrete. And so the Spanish used it for their buildings here in the southeast, in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. So tabby is a mix of oyster shells, which we can see here. Uh, and then equal parts water, sand, and lime. And the way the Spanish got that lime was by burning oyster shells. So where did the Spanish get these materials from? Well, most of them were local. So I'm here on the coast of Georgia here. We've got a lot of sand, a lot of water. Uh, also, the Native Americans would have discarded their oyster shells into what's called middens. Uh, that is Native American refuse piles, basically trash piles. And so the Spanish would have found easily accessible oyster shells in these Native American middens. So all the materials were easily accessible. It uh, was very cheap to make these buildings. You didn't need to have any skill. And the way you would make them is you would um, have a mold. We'd start at the very bottom here. Uh, you would have a mold in which you would pour your tabby concrete. Once that tabby set, then you would pour your next layer. So we can see those layers here. We're looking at the bottom layer, and then you can see the line where this next layer starts, and the next. Okay, so we'll go into this first room here. Uh, the British, when they took over the colonies down here, down to Georgia, they saw a lot of these Spanish tabby buildings and they decided to use tabby themselves because it is so easy and cheap to use. Uh, so uh, you'll find tabby buildings up until the early 1800s. So it was popular in the early US as well. After that, tabby went out of favor, but when concrete came back, came into the picture in the late 1800s, people would create a fake tabby. They would pour concrete and then just put shells on top of it and call that tabby. That's not correct. So if you want to see a real tabby building, it needs to date from the early 1800s and before. And I'll tell you uh, what some of those buildings are if you want to go see them for yourselves. But we are here in the Macintosh sugar mill. So look. So this was built in the 1820s as a sugar mill for John Houston Macintosh's plantation. So this first room that we're in here, there's three rooms, and those three rooms each would have a different operation in them. So there was a streamlined process here to this mill. This first room would have been the mill itself. So this would have been the only room that would have been two stories. And these walls we're looking at, they're 14 feet high. So uh, down on this lower level where we are, this is where the oxen would power the mill. And then up on the second story, which you see does not exist, that is where the mill would have been. So this is where in the mill they uh, crushed the sugar cane to extract the sweet juices from the sugar cane. And then they would take those juices to the next room. So let's go into the next room here. We've got a step. So in this next room, this is where the kettles would have been, where they would have boiled that uh, sweet juice down into a syrup. And part of the reason why tabby was considered a good material for sugar mills in particular was that they kept the heat in and it was important to keep that heat in to uh, make sure that the sugar turned into syrup effectively. So here we are going into the next room of this sugar mill. And this is where the syrup would have been placed to just sit 
and turn into granulated sugar. And after that happened, they would separate the granulated sugar from the molasses. And those are the two uh, materials that they would be able to sell, the granulated sugar and the molasses. So here in the sugar mill, these three different rooms would uh, contribute to the sugar making process. The southeast, of course, was a um, very popular place for growing sugarcane as well as rice and cotton. So this sugar mill is actually one of the best preserved tabby constructions in the southeast. If you are interested in seeing more tabby buildings, you can go to St. Simon's Island if you visit Fort Frederica. That is a tabby fort built in the 1740s by General James Oglethorpe, who was the founder of the Georgia colony. If you go outside Savannah to Wormslow Plantation, there are the ruins of a plantation house there that are built of tabby. You'll also find some tabby ruins on Sapelo Island, one of Georgia's barrier islands. And you'll see tabby in other places in the southeast uh, in smaller amounts, nothing that is this large and well preserved. But whenever you do spot tabby, and I mean legitimate tabby from the early 1800s or before, it's very exciting because it is so rare. So if you are interested in learning more about tabby, I'd be happy to tell you more. Uh, but this is the story of the Tabby Sugar Mill here in St. Mary's. Thank you.